Good morning, Carrie. Good morning, good morning. Welcome, yogis. Sorry for the delay. It was like a comedy of errors this morning. Couldn't find my charging cord, couldn't find my microphone, forgot that I didn't have anything set up because I was doing tomatoes a couple of days ago. So we're here. It's okay. Mr. B's chill. Come on to your mat. I brought a piece of celery. Come here. There you go. Yeah, he's been really chill this morning. Mr. B loves uh, celery more than pretty much anything, even I think. <laughs> so come on to your mat. Um, good morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning, so we're here to do Journey into Power. Um, just going to take this kind of a little bit slower today. So I don't know if you can see in the camera, but I had a run in with like a wooden storage crate that I have, and it's like, <laughs> and it's bruised, and it was bleeding, and it doesn't feel too bad, but I'm definitely not going to be doing anything too crazy today. Not going to be getting down onto my shins too much if possible, but I'm um, taking the practice. So Journey into Power. 60 minutes and I'm going to do it just a little bit more. Maybe I don't want to say basic, but definitely if it's like if you're new or you're a beginner, or if you um, do this practice and you know somebody that's newer to it, maybe just a little bit slower pace this morning than usual so I can kind of not aggravate what I did here yesterday. So child's pose. Okay, we'll start there. Knees wide. Um, before you move on to your mat, if you're not there yet, subscribe to the channel. Please um, yeah, hit the notification bell, all of that kind of good stuff so that you know when I'm posting new content. I am doing a tomato canning video that's coming very soon. Good morning. Um, okay, child's pose, yeah? Take your knees nice and wide. Sit back onto your heels. And you will start to connect to your breath. Find your ujjayi breathing. So you're going to start to breathe in and out through your nose. And start to make your breath more audible. Breathe in, breathe out. And each breath here, keep them long, audible, intentional. Spread out your fingers now. Feel your hands on your mat and start to press down into your fingers, start to press down into the tops of your feet, waking up your physical body. Big breath in. Spread your fingers and press your hips even further back onto your heels and then come up to tabletop on your hands and knees. Downward facing dog, curl your toes under and lift your hips up and back. And from here, again, set up your foundation of your hands, your feet. You're going to spread your fingers and toes. You kind of feel out your body in this first down dog this morning, whatever time of day it is, if you're catching me later. So just like feel it out. Soften the elbows, soften the knees. Start to get into your center a little more. Your core muscles, pull those in. Press your tailbone back. Big stretch across the back of the body. Breathe in, breathe out, feet together at the back of your mat. Lift your right foot up, bend your knee, stack open your hips. Start to really lift that right hip up. You're going to feel your right shoulder might try to pop up. Drop the right shoulder back down so it's level with the left side. Press your hands. Open up that right side of your body. Really lift through the knee. Wiggle out your toes, wiggle out your ankle, take a breath in, and then release. Switch sides, left foot up, three-legged dog. You feel that. You press into your hands and keep your chest, keep your shoulders squared to the floor. And then more lift. So you keep lifting up that left knee, lifting up that left hip. Take a breath in. Press down into your mat. One more big breath, lift, wiggle your toes and ankle, open, and then release. Walk up to the top of your mat, and then take your feet hip distance apart. Ragdoll. Just grab onto opposite elbows or biceps. Let your upper body dangle down here. Just sway 
If that feels nice, really let go of your head. Like just letting go of the upper body. Breathe in. Soften even deeper here. You look at how your body landed on your mat for this practice. There's some tightness. Do you have maybe you have an injury like I do, and that's okay, right? If you like have a big bruise on your shin, you're gonna practice a little bit different. And if you don't, something's going on in your body, even if something's going on in your life, if there's something there distracting you, something there disempowering you that tries to pop in, be aware of it, it's there, it's real. Maybe. So just keep coming back to the breathing, to the physical experience of your body in your practice. Fingertips down to the ground. Bring your big toes back to touch. Heels just a little bit separated. It's true north alignment to the feet and come up to a flat back now. So like lengthen through the crown of your head. Flat back and then fold. Hug your chest to your thighs. Do that again. Flat back. Pull the pit of your belly, Uddiyana Bandha, these muscles, belly button in and up, lengthen the spine, and then fold. Again, keep that engagement through the core. Extended mountain, you'll reach all the way up to the ceiling, to the sky, and like lengthen up, hands to the center of your chest. Start with an ohm, take a breath in. Ooh. Exhale. Reach your fingertips up. Lengthen the sides of your body. Fold forward. Hug into your legs. Halfway lift. Again, a flat back. Lengthen the spine. Chaturanga Dandasana. So high plank. Chaturanga Dandasana is lowering down here. You're going to come down to a low plank. Keep the elbows in near the body. You can be on your knees. That's an option here. Upward facing dog, you'll lift up. Chest pulls through that window of your arms. Arm bones back. And then downward facing dog, you go back. Curl your toes over. And press back into your heels here. Down dog is your home base in this practice. We keep coming back. It's just an opportunity to reset, to begin again, right? One flow, one pose might have taken you out, might have given you a story, and then you come back to down dog and just begin again. Your breath, your physical body, your gaze, what you're looking at is important too, like visually, like with your eyeballs, what they see. You can be looking at things with your mind without actually being trained on them with your eyes too. Lift up onto your toes, bend your knees, see the top of your mat, and then land your feet there. You can step or you can try to hop up. Halfway lift. Keep your eyes right at the top of your mat. Fold. Look to your, towards your belly button. Extended mountain. Look up past your fingertips. See past your fingertips. Fold. Look back to your center. Your Uddiyana Bandha muscles. Pull them in. Halfway lift. Eyes at the top of your mat. Lengthen your neck. Chaturanga Dandasana, keep your eyes trained at that one spot as you lower down. Upward facing dog, look up. Lengthen the back of your neck. Downward facing dog. Your drishti, your eyes, land back between your feet. See what you see. But be intentional in that. Seeing one fleck of pain, seeing like one hair on the carpet. If you're really trained at one spot, committed to it, Another point of focus here that keeps distraction at bay, keeps it harder for your mind to wander. Press down your hands and your feet. Pull the pit of your belly and come up onto your toes. Bend your knees, look to the top of your mat. Hopper step to the top of your mat, flat back on the breath in, lengthen. Fold. One more, extended mountain, reach up and back, pull in, Uriana Banda, reach back, and then fold, chin to chest, hug in, halfway lift, Chaturanga Dandasana, step back, 
Shoot back, lower down. Upward facing dog, pull your chest forward, lift your legs. Downward facing dog, hips back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Eyes are open and connected to one point. Hands and feet pressed down. Skin hugging the muscles, muscles hugging the bones of your body. Feel that engagement, squeeze in, lift up. Bend and empty completely this exhale. Hop to the top of your mat, halfway lift. Fold. Utkatasana, chair pose, thunderbolt. They're all the same pose, okay? So I feel like thunderbolt's more up here a little bit. Sometimes this is what my knees need. I feel like not going quite as deep. And it's like maybe sometimes I just don't want to go quite as deep, right? Like more I feel chair pose is more like down here where it's like you're actually like you're in a chair. The weight into your heels. Draw your upper arm bones back. Take three breaths here. Inhale. Building up some heat now. The tapas is the word in Sanskrit. The heat, the fire in your legs, your core muscles. Sink deeper. Breathe in. Lift your chest. Fold. Chest to thighs. Halfway lift. Chaturanga Dandasana. Step back. Lower down. Upward facing dog. Press the floor. Lift up. Downward facing dog. Hips back. Right foot. Warrior one. On the breath in, just keep reaching up. Keep sinking deep into that front knee. Chaturanga Dandasana. Flow it out. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Left side. Warrior one. Reach up. Sink down into your knee. Keep reaching your fingertips. And then flow, Chaturanga Dandasana, high to low plank, getting some movement here, upward facing dog, feel your lungs, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, take a breath out, building some heat, starting to feel that flow, vinyasa, your breath, your body, your awareness, it's all connected here, flowing, moving, Dynamic, present, right here. Breathe in. Press down, lengthen. Lift up onto your toes. Bend your knees. Hop to the top. Flat back. Fold. Chair pose. One breath. Sink down. Fold. Halfway lift. Chaturanga Dandasana, step or shoot back, low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Warrior one on the right side, step forward, and then hold it, we'll hold here. So feeling out, intentionally the setting up of the pose, the feet, press them down, you don't have to see them. Commit your drishti to one spot. From here. When you get into your lunge, go deeper. Let that knee sink down. Knee is over your ankle. I feel that. Feel out the depth of the lunge. Get right into where your like, inner thighs scissoring, holding you strong. Two more breaths. Reach up. Lunge a little deeper. Big lengthening breath. Chaturanga Dandasana. You flow with your breath. Upward facing dog. Lift up. Downward facing dog, go back. Take the left side. I'm just going to move my mat. My head's like tickling that palm over there with every pose. <laughs> Come up. Nice and tall. Sink down into your front knee. Yeah, so again, feeling out the feet. Feeling out the pose. And if you have to quickly glance to make sure your knee is around your ankle, like a line there, that's fine. But no analyzing visually. Feel. Deepen. Your body possibility right here for you to feel out like something new that maybe you haven't experienced from your feet, from your core muscles, your legs, you reach up, go back, take a breath in, Chaturanga Dandasana, flow, 
upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Five breaths. Press down, really feel your home base pose here. Feel your body, feel like the vitality you're starting to generate. That heat, that physical awareness. Cultivate it, add it in here like more breath, more focus. Inhale together. Press down into your hands and your feet. Lift up onto your toes. See the top of your mat, hopper step there, flat back, and fold. Utkatasana, sink low, yogi, reach up, fold forward. Halfway lift, lengthen the spine. Chaturanga Dandasana, high to low plank. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Right side warrior one. We're moving now. Vinyasa, your breath flowing. Chaturanga Dandasana. Float your right toes. See what happens. Upward facing dog. Lift your chest forward. Downward facing dog. Left side. Feet to fingers. Your full body expression here. Reaching. Chaturanga Dandasana, flow. You can try to float your left toes. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Breathe. Cultivating tapas, heat. Feeling alive, feeling awake in the poses. Like get your body even more present if you're dull, if you're distracted. What can you give up right now to get more present, more physically dialed in, mentally right here, right now? Lift up onto your toes, bend your knees. The answer is you move, yogi, you flow. Flat back at the top of your mat, fold. Chair, breathe in, fold. Halfway lift, Chaturanga Dandasana, upward facing dog, downward facing dog, flow with your body, warrior one, right side, don't think about it, just move with your breath, Chaturanga Dandasana, let your body guide you, upward facing dog, lift up, downward facing dog, left side, Press into your feet, reach, lengthen, chaturanga dandasana, you flow. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, big breath in, big breath out. Bring your feet together at the back of your mat. We'll take three-legged dog like we did at the beginning, right leg up, bend your knee, stack your hips. We're gonna flip this time. So starting to get lighter on the right fingers, letting that right shoulder lift up now. And as lightly as you can flip, let that foot land behind you. Lift up through the hips. Reach with your fingers on the right side. Breathe in. Breathe out. Feet press down. Hips lift up. Two more, inhale, exhale. Big breath in, flip over to high plank, and take side plank. My mic's in my arm, okay, one second, I'm joining you. <laughs> take your left arm up. Ooh, maybe, find your fullest expression. Right here, feel that. So lift up through your hips, hug the pit of your belly in, and then see if the top leg can lift up too. Like even just like an inch off your bottom leg and then you let it come down again. Building new strength, right? Like a millimeter and then it drops down. That's perfect. And keep playing with like how high you can get that top leg. You keep lifting, keep expanding. Take a big breath in. Stay for the breath out. Drishti, look up to your top hand. 
Chaturanga Dandasana, who you might fall out, that's okay. High to low plank, lower down. Upward facing dog, lift up. Downward facing dog. Don't be afraid to get messy, yeah? You might fall out when you try to do something. Perfect, you tried something. And you, like, don't need to care how the outcome was. <laughs> you just move forward. Next moment, next pose, new possibility. Left leg goes up. Bend your knee. Stack your hips. Find lightness as you flip here. Like, as quiet as you can. Silent flip dogs. And then lift up. Press into your heels. Feel your shin bones pressing back towards your shoulders. Keep reaching through those left fingers. Breathe in and breathe out. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Firm up both legs. Press your feet. Open your mouth. Lion's breath. Ha! Flip the high plank. Side plank on the other side, okay? So you're going to take the right arm up. And you're going to press down into that bottom hand. You can have your feet staggered on the ground. This might help with stability side by side or stacked, a little more challenging. Invite the right amount of challenge for you, lifting that leg a little, playing with that, lifting that leg a lot, playing with that, looking up, like see the ceiling, see your top thumb, take a big inhale, whoop, <laughs> Chaturanga Tendasana, flow it out. Don't break your windows. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. One of the studios I teach at, there's often um, like headstands and stuff that <laughs> actually smash up the plate glass. So yeah, avoid that. Don't be too crazy. Take your right foot up. Step your right foot to your right hand. Too crazy. That's whenever things get broken, I would say. Like, great. You can go right up to that point. <laughs> Hit the window. Just don't break it. No. Be careful, right? And just like listening to your body. It's like it can be playful or it can be exhausting if you're forcing things and you're not listening. Hands to the center of your chest here. So the back heel is lifted up. Feel that. Instead of um, heel on the ground for warrior one, right? It's lifted. Crown of the head draws forward. Hook your left elbow on your right knee. Shoulder blades draw back. Yeah, so the tendency, you'll see them rolling forward, that right shoulder rolling forward. Pull the right shoulder onto your back. Press your hands together. Twist that bottom rib cage up. Breathe in. Pull the pit of your belly in Uddiyana Bandha. Wake that area up. More length. More twist. Warrior two. Sink down into your front knee. Okay, keep sinking into it. Keep wiggling down. Find your deepest, juiciest, fieriest expression and hold there. Breathe into it. Open to the possibility there might even be more than you think, more than your body first stops you at. Breathe. Not forcing, not suffering, nothing like being held onto that doesn't fit, but there might be more available than you think. More space than you felt. Breathe in. Breathe out. Extended side angle. Bring your... Right elbow to your knee, that's an option. Yeah, left arm goes up. Or right fingertips to the inside of your foot. If you have props, this is a nice place for a yoga block. Under your fingers. Stack the joints here, wrists and shoulders. Get them as stacked as you can. Twisting the bottom, lung, upwards. You can use that bottom arm if it's down. Press your right elbow into your knee, like leverage the twist. Breathe in, breathe out, inhale, exhale, look up, reach up. Take one more big breath in, Chaturanga Dandasana, plant your hands, flow it out. Upward facing dog, lift up, downward facing dog. Big breath in, big breath out. Left foot up and step your left foot between your hands, crescent lunge. Come up. Find stability here. If you're like on a tightrope, right, with your feet like right behind each other, that might be really challenging. You can take your feet a bit wider, right? Like you're more like you're standing on train tracks in the pose. 
sink down into that front knee and wake up the back leg, kneecap lift, heel lifts, your glute activates, hands to heart center and twist. What is wrong with that? What is up? What is up? What do your dog ears hear that we don't hear? <laughs> he hears like one noise outside and it's very, very upsetting to him. I'm, I'm very sure that he's totally fine. <laughs> Mr. B, come over here, what's up? What do you hear? What is so upsetting? You hear something in the backyard. Uh oh, dog on alerts. Take a breath in. Twist your upper body further. Warrior two, open up. If you've never met a Rottweiler, they use crazy dogs in a good way. Like funny. <laughs> he could care less about some things that upset, like the squirrels, doesn't care. But like a noise that he doesn't know where it came from. Oh my god, the world stops. Sink deeper into your front knee, like settle into the thighs, thigh muscles scissoring, squeezing the bones, breathe in, press your feet, full inhale, full exhale, extended side angle, again, elbow can be on the knee, or a block can come in here, stacking the joints, opening the front of the body, breathe in, breathe out, more reach up twist really feel that draw the top shoulder blade back spark every finger take a full inhale full exhale one more big reach chaturanga dandasana plant your hands flow it out upward facing dog downward facing dog up onto your toes bend your knees hop or step to the top of your mat Halfway left, fold, chair, sit down into it, twist here, so you'll reach up and then bring your hands to heart center, feel that space in the sides of your body as you twist, hook your left elbow onto your right knee, that left knee might try to kind of do a weird thing here where you pop forward and draw it back, okay, knees in line with each other. Shoulder blades back, not rolling forward. Keep that integration. Breathe in, twist your spine, lengthen it, twist it a little further. One more breath in, and then release feet. Up your big, console your dog if he's very concerned. My neighbor's loading his car, the car. That's, I can hear it. It's way too faint for you to hear, I'm sure. Oh, I know. Somebody is like filling up a car and you weren't invited. That's extremely upsetting. For you, you can scoop up your big toes. I just need to I try to console him. I hope he's keep crying. Feeling like he's being left out of someone's car trip. Come here, come here. Just lie down, you're fine. Yeah, you know, you're okay. It's okay, you don't have to go every time someone gets in the car. Oh, shit, oh, shit. <laughs> sorry, I should not have said that word. I'm stupid, okay. I'm not stupid. I'm seeing things pop out sideways. That's not nice. Good boy, later. You have to wait. Not right now. Can you go to your bed? How about you try that? You go to your bed and chill out. Sorry for the distraction, yogis. Let's take chair on the other side. Hopefully you relax there. <laughs> Sit down. If you're craning your neck to watch Mr. B. Get present, yogis. I know he's cute, but come on now. Shoulders back. <laughs> Integrate through the core muscles, through the upper body, and really feel the twist. And if that right knee starts to boom, pop forward, drop back. Keep the hips in line. Keep integration, integrity in the upper body, in the legs. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Lengthen and twist. Release. Gorilla pose. Feet hip distance apart. Toes up to your wrist creases. Yeah, so you're going to put your palms underneath your feet. And then you press the soles of the feet down into your palms. And really like actively press the tops of your hands down into the mat, really stretching the wrists, the forearms. You don't have to hold up your head. Really find your breath here. If you want more activation, press your toes into your wrists a lot and you can start to tilt forward a little bit, like start shifting your hips one or two centimeters farther forward. 
five or 10 centimeters further forward, like where you almost feel like you're going to fall forward, where you're going to somersault, don't do that, but press up like through the bum cheeks, through the tailbone, lifting your upper body, just totally let it go. Breathe in, breathe out. One more here. Release your feet. We'll set up for crow pose. If you are new to crow pose, you can use a block, okay? So this is how I first got into it. Putting your toes up on the block, this is gonna bring your body into a better position here. So hands on the mat, knees into your armpits, whether you're using a block or not, right? This is the setup for it. With my toes on the block, I don't know if you can see, like it's just easier for me to get my knees in the right spot. Yeah, knees on my triceps. This is not crow, okay? Not knees on the outsides of the triceps, squeezing. I can feel quivering happening in muscles that don't wanna work in crow, okay? It's in the knees, in the armpits. And if it feels weird to you, it's weird. <laughs> what we're about to do is weird, okay? You'll feel that. You even might be sore on the backs of your arms for the first while if you change to this, if you're used to the outside. Take your time, intentional in the setup here. Bend the elbows a lot. You're gonna to start to create a little shelf. Keep a hugging in through the knees so they don't slip to the outsides of the triceps. Lift up. So your toes pointing, heels lifting. If you want to try even next step, straightening the arms a bit, see what happens. You might fall out. That's okay. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. One more. Come up. Stay. Squeeze. Chaturanga Dandasana. You shoot back. You step back. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Props can be helpful to like, just get you to feel your body in a new space sometimes. Yeah, possibility from that. Step to the top of your mat. Halfway lift on your breath in. And fold. Sweep all the way up. Take eagle on the right side. So here I'll turn. Eagle, you're gonna take the right arm underneath and the right leg over the left side, okay? And from here, hug the biceps, hug the, ooh, that doesn't feel nice on my knee, on my shin. Okay, wait. You do you, that's what you might wanna do, okay? Toes on the ground. You can maybe bring something like this. I'm gonna like do some weird looking things. I don't want my leg to touch my, <laughs> if, you're, if you're just joining me here and didn't see the beginning, I smashed my shin bone all up. It's all gross and bloody, so I don't really wanna deal with that. Hug your inner thighs, hug your biceps, sink a little deeper, sweep up. Take the other side, side should be fine. So left arm under, left leg over. And again, you take, one side might look really different than the other. For me, it, it does just from mobility, regardless of if I have an actual physical injury, right? But so my one side is tighter. Hugging in, squeezing to center line. Take a breath in, take a breath out, sweep up. Do that on the right side again, right arm under, right leg over. Dogs are so funny. Okay, just hug in. Like, I'm just, I don't know if you can even hear this, but he, like, they're, they're like loading. He works on a old cars next door, right? So when he's doing that, the dog thinks somebody's, like, getting ready for, like, a trip. And he's very distraught right now that he's not going on this trip. <laughs> Take a breath in. Empty it out. Sweep your arms up. Switch sides on the left. Baby, come here. Come here. You're being really silly. Yeah, you're being silly. Could you maybe go into your bed and lie down again? Sink a little deeper. Take a breath in. Hug in. Sweep your arms up. Take standing leg raise on the right side, okay? I have to turn for this one or I'm gonna actually, maybe not here, I'll show you like this and then I'll turn. So you're gonna open up, okay? So you grab onto your right knee and open up. Knee to the side, reach your left arm out to the left side. And if you've got the mobility, really the balance, you can take your foot and open it up. Hold here, core muscles are strong, really tall through the crown of the head. Lifting from that bottom foot, feel a straight line straight up to the crown of the head, lift it. Breathe in, leg back to center. Arms back, I'm gonna turn or I'll kick out my window. We're trying not to kick out windows, remember. Airplane pose, fly back. 
Press back through the right heel and turn down your right pinky toe. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lift higher in the pose. Feel that back glute, your back leg. Really wake it up. Activate it. Hands to heart center. Open to half moon. Another great place for a block, a water bottle. There's something to bring the floor a bit closer if you need it, okay? Right arm reaches up. Right leg lifts up. My tendency here is to roll out to the pinky toe edge of my bottom foot. Press into that left toe mound. Big toe mound, inner ankle back. Active that whole foot. Lift up. Try to look up, see what happens. One more breath in. And release feet together. Fold. Halfway lift, fold forward, sweep all the way up, take the other side, standing leg raise, okay? So you're going to grab onto your left leg, sorry, your left knee, whoop, your left toe, whatever it is, you open up, gaze over the right shoulder. Stay whoop tall through the crown of the head sometimes. And if you fall and don't fix it, I'm getting it necessarily exactly as it was. Just get back into it, yogi. Breathe in. Breathe out. Tall spine open on the inhale. Exhale your foot back to center. Arms up. Foot forward. And then fly back. Airplane pose. Keep the left pinky toe turning down, right? So the tendency will be to open up the side body. Well, I fall out when I even do that now. But turning down through the pinky toe. You want your chest square to the floor, hips square to the floor for this pose. Yeah, you lift, press that bottom foot, take a breath in, take a breath out, hands to heart center, and open it up. Half moon. Again, your block might be super helpful here. Okay, so open. Feel the leg on the left side lifting up, fingertips lifting, eyeballs turning upwards. Like, see that? And then Feel your bottom foot. You don't have to see it. That right big toe mound, right inner ankle, pressing down. Lift the pose higher. Breathe in. And then fold feet together. Halfway lift. Fold. Sweep all the way up. So funny. <laughs> I, don't know, I just don't know how much you guys can hear. People tell me they can't hear stuff that I can hear sometimes in the comments. So, Dancer's pose. Sorry if I'm distracted, but the dog's being adorable and ridiculous. Grab the inside of your right foot. Kick back. It's always like a bonus when you get these kind of challenges in your practice, like an adorable animal, an adorable child. Or like sometimes less than adorable animal or child, <laughs> right? Depending on what the behavior is, but that's okay. Whatever it is, you like choose how you respond to it. Kick back into your hand. Feel a lift through your chest, a lift through that back heel. Big breath in. Switch sides. Somebody out there is loading a car and they're slamming the door. Well, not even slamming, closing. <laughs> Appropriately closing the door. <laughs> and he is concerned. Lift up. Kick back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Again, go higher, feel that lift, and release. Take dancer again on the other side. Okay, so you'll kick back into your hands. Lift up the back heel. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lift. Your core, your Uddiyana Bandha muscles are strong, Yogi. One more breath in, and release. Switch sides. Last one here, left side, dancer. Baby, come and go to your bed again. I don't, you don't need to stand back there and worry about it too much. Come here. He goes back there and then he's right in just like one door between him and me. The excitement. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's where I'm sore. I don't, I don't need any dog licks to heal the wound. It's okay. Thank you that you're concerned. Oh my God, he's so cute. Go to your bed. Kick back. I'm really distracted by him this morning. He's adorable. Kick back and lift. Take a breath in. Release. Yeah, that was kind of just like slightly a result of you because I was like half tripping over the dog when I came into the crate. Okay, let's do tree pose. Coming back, equanimity. This is actually the practice is called equanimity, balancing your focus, <laughs> getting distracted by cute dogs and just bringing yourself back, right? That's the work. So tree, you can take a kickstand. Maybe your, your um, 
What do they say? You're a better door than a window. What are your bad? What are your bad? Like a big black blob is hard to see through. Um, <laughs> kickstand. Okay. Focus. Yogis. Toes on the ground if you need the support. Okay. Inner calf is an option. Most people have access to this unless you need some help with balance. Above the knee, all the way up to the inner thigh. So you are not allowed to press the side of your knee like this. Okay. Right in the joint. It doesn't feel good. So above or below. I'm going to go below today. Okay. And hands at heart center. Breathing. Keep that right leg opening out to the side, like really point it out to the right side of your mat. Space in the sides of the body. If you come out, come back up, right? You tip a toe down, you begin again. You fall out, like epic fall out, you begin again. It doesn't matter. Just grow your tree. Like take up space, access what you can right here. And if you get so big, you fall out. Amazing. Acknowledge that that happened. You're so strong. You're being playful. Perfect. Take a breath in and release. Hands to heart center. Switch sides. Tree pose. Left leg out to the side. Hands can start at heart center and then you grow. Feel that bottom foot. Four corners of the bottom foot. Big toe mound, pinky toe mound, inner ankle, outer ankle, rooting. We're like literally sending, well, maybe not literally, but sending roots figuratively <laughs> down through your foot. Find space, find openness. Big breath in right here. Hands to heart center. We use the word literally too liberally in today's society. <laughs> Side note. Reach your arms up to the ceiling. If you can grow roots out of your feet, then you're a special human being. Fold forward. Chest to your thighs. Halfway lift. You can feel like you're rooting into the earth, though. That's important. Chaturanga Dandasana. I'll stop rambling crazy stuff now. Lower down. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take your right foot forward. Warrior one. Open to warrior two. We'll take Trikonasana, triangle pose, straighten the front leg, and then reach your fingertips down to the outside of your front foot. It's a good place, again, to use a block. So fingertips up on a block, stacking the chest, the shoulders, the wrists, all in a big line. Take a breath in. Make sure your knees are not rigid, okay? Soften them. Lean back and open up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Pull yourself up to stand. Side facing wide leg fold, so turn the toes in, fold forward. You can have your hands on your hips here, it's leading with the chest. If you practice a headstand, go for it. Just moving into the biggest fold that you have. Press down into the outer edges of both feet and then feel a lift up through the inner thighs. Hi, lie down here, right here. This is perfect. Yeah, I can give you up. Just right here, down, lie down. Right here, just go, oh, come here, come here, come here. This was great, this is great. Down, down, down. We have like five breaths. Yeah, this is great. Nice. Go chill in. Like thinking about it. Yeah, nice. It's pretty good, yeah. I haven't heard a door slam for a few minutes. Starting to forget about it. Kind of that goldfish memory, right? Yeah. <laughs> Except for when it comes to food and toys. <laughs> Take a breath in. Let your upper body go, like soften a bit more. And then bring yourself back up to stand slowly, hands in your hips with a flat back. You stand up. Pyramid pose. Toes forward. Step your back foot in. Okay, so the back foot comes in. Your back foot's just off from 12 o'clock, so like 11 or 10 o'clock, and then fold over the right leg. Let your upper body go. Let the crown of the head dangle down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Flip to a flat back. We'll flow here through Chaturanga Dandasana. On the exhale, lower down. Upward facing dog, press. Lift your chest forward. Downward facing dog. And then left side, warrior one. Warrior two. Triangle pose. Reach for your block again if you have ones to bring the floor a bit closer to your fingers. Unlike spider fingers, not 
too intense, like not gripping a block, not like pressing the floor too hard, but like lightness and openness across the front of the body. Breathe in. Lightness and openness in the joints. Your knees, they're soft, but the legs are strong and straight. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Look up to your hands and twist a little further. Pull yourself up to stand. Wide leg fold. The left toes turn in. Come down. Mr. B. Hey, you were just like looking for mischief this morning, eh? Looking for something to be concerned about. Bodies need to have something to be concerned about, right? Yeah. You're being very distracting. I feel like you'll be even more distracting to these people because I keep talking to them and then they want to see what's happening because you're cute. Yeah. People come, but maybe don't even come for the yoga. Come just to see you because you're so cute. That's good. <laughs> Let go of the crown of your head. It's dangling here. Press your feet. You can have your hands interlaced behind your back if that feels nice. Press it up. Now you see shadows. You do not have to be alarmed for my well. That's actually a shadow. It's with you today. Bring yourself up to stand. It is a shadow. It's all that it is, goofball. Step your back foot in, pyramid pose. If I don't bring them on Sunday mornings, I literally get people messaging me on social media, what happened to Mr. B, what's going on, where was he? <laughs> get onto your bed, leave it. Go to your bed. He has been known to jump up and claw walls. It's happened twice in his life. At least he's a shadow he doesn't like, so try to just, you know, hijack that behavior. That's good. Folding here, let the upper body go. Take a breath in, take a breath out. Come up to a flat back, step back to high plank, lower down to low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. We'll walk to the top of the mat, come down onto your bum, roll it onto your back, and we'll move into bridge pose, okay? So in bridge, bring your heels in close enough to your bum, you can just kind of graze them with your fingertips there. And then from here, Press the backs of your triceps down too. So pressing your feet, pressing your triceps, and then lift up through your hips. Keep pressing. Like press your triceps so much your shoulder blades lift. You can press the back of the skull to lift the shoulder blades and then hug them together. Like pull them to the center of your back. Lift your chest up. Lift your hips up. Keep your triceps grounding down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Really press the back of the skull. Keep your neck supported. Keep strong on the back of the body. Big breath. Lift and squeeze. Take another inhale and slowly come down. Knees from side to side. Got ants in your pants? There's literally not even sound longing. Who knows what dogs can hear? I don't hear the car sound anymore, so... Let's go up into bridge again or wheel. Okay, so for wheel pose, and if you can't do wheel, if you've never done wheel and it looks too hard, you know, that word hard, that insidious word hard, challenging, it's a challenging pose. Hands by your ears. Press your hands down into your mat and then lift up here. So you're gonna start to lift it. If this is as far as you get and you're just pressing, like my arms, I feel my whole arms and shoulders working. And then maybe you press so much you get to the crown of your head. That's a half wheel. You can do this and still work elbows in towards each other, pressing every knuckle, pressing the mounds of the toes, the heels. Maybe you can start to do little push-ups. Like that's the first step to getting into a wheel. You push, you come down, and then one day it's like the full thing. Possibility might be there. Breathe and ground all your fingers, the mounds of the toes, press. Lift, take a big inhale, slowly come down, tuck your chin, shoulders down, knees can fall from side to side, just kind of letting go of those low back muscles for a moment. And then you go again, hands by your ears. Whether you can go up into wheel or not, if you want to get there, do this work, push, just push. If there's like in your brain, no chance in hell you're getting your head and shoulders off the ground. Amazing. Keep doing this. 
every couple days, you know, you practice this and the muscles get stronger and then you're lifting before you know it. Yogis, I'm speaking from personal experience. You can. I didn't think I could. And then I change the story and then things start to change. You start to get stronger when you think it's possible. Take a big breath in. Slowly come all the way down. If you think a yoga pose is impossible, then, you know, if this surprises you, but you're going to, you're not going to try as hard. You're not even going to try at all, probably. You know, just convince yourself it's not worth trying because why try something that's impossible? Sounds exhausting. Really challenging, cool, like extremely challenging, amazing. That's what like makes humans so good is that we can like rise to a challenge, figure things out, get creative. One more, whatever you do right here. And bridge is great, but bridge won't lead to wheel, right? Bridge will be like, if you just do bridge every time thinking I can't do wheel, that's too hard. Like, and maybe you have real back injuries and things. Don't argue with your body, yogis. Argue with your limiting belief. I can't. Where is it coming from? What evidence do you have? How do you know that's true? Press down. Lift up. Take a big breath in. Come all the way down. Soup the bottom knots and the soles of the feet together. Knees wide. Take your right hand on your belly. Take your left hand on your heart. And just breathe here. And close your eyes. Practice is really powerful because it gets people to challenge themselves. Yeah. Speaking from myself, I know I challenge myself a lot in this practice. Sometimes I do. Sometimes it's less than that, right? Depending on the day, who cares? But consistently, like just trying. Showing up. I don't even like the word trying. Like if you are here doing yoga, you're not trying to do yoga. You're doing yoga. Yeah. Yoda. Those are really powerful words. Do or do not. There is no try. You're not trying to do the pose. You're doing the pose, and then you're having an experience of it. And it might not be what your neighbor looks like. It might not be what I look like, what yoga journal looks like. When you Google the pose, like, if that's cool, maybe that's true. But if you're doing the pose and feeling it, feeling your body working, waking up, muscles firing, like, strong, no pain, no suffering, but, like, challenged that's the work of yoga you're doing yoga if you're in the pose stop trying to get it right just do it the more you do it the more right it's going to feel hug your knees into your chest give yourself a squeeze here we'll stay on our backs for the rest of this practice today okay so if you really if you do journey into power and you want half pigeon go for it i'm going to take thread the needle Okay, this is also called reclined pigeon. So right ankle on your left knee. Keep the sole of both feet flexed and active, okay? And then you're going to reach through. So this is called thread the needle because it's like you're threading a needle, right? You're reaching right hand to the inside of your left thigh, left hand to the outside of your left thigh, and then interlace your hands behind. And start to pull in. So your head and shoulders are on the ground. The tendency sometimes will be to kind of do this kind of thing. No, let the upper body relax. And then draw in through the left thigh. And if you have access, use your right elbow to push your right knee away from you at the same time. So left knee draws into the chest, right knee, right thigh pushes away from the chest. And your feet are not kind of limp and hanging there. They're active. Toes flexed back to your shin bones. Pull in and push out. A few more breaths. In. And out. Your eyes can be closed if you want to, right? You might have lights in your eyes, or there might be a good reason. The sun shining in your eyes when you're watching this. I don't know what it is, but keep your drishti, your focus is still here, okay? So your focus, your attention can be here, even if your eyes are closed. Take a breath in. Deepen that. Pull in, push out, feel that stretch, and switch sides on the left, okay? So your right foot on the ground, left foot on your right knee. Thread the needle and pull in the right thigh. Okay, so right thigh now draws in. Left knee, left thigh pushes out. Keep the feet flexed. Stay strong. Every breath, possibility to access more of this stretch. Millimeters, 
can add so much sensation. Draw that knee closer to your chest on the right side and push the left knee away at the same time. Wake it up. Tap into this. Your feet are awake too. Like the body is still alive and awake here, yogis. Keep yourself active. Just letting your upper body be at ease. One more breath in. Pull a little tighter. And release. Hug your knees in. Grab, oh, unless the front of your shin is raw. Don't do that. Grab the outsides of your feet. Doesn't actually hurt until I touch it, right? And then happy baby here. Just rock from side to side. Sway from side to side. When you get like um, stupid injuries like this, and I'm just saying stupid, like, you know, it's not really serious. Like I'm very aware that just like scraping my shin bone on a wooden crate is not like I'm, I'm, I'm fine. But it's also a, just a good indication of how yoga works everywhere. Because I was like, you know, you have that moment of like being infuriated because you just hurt yourself and you're bleeding. And it was like, you know, arguably stupid how it happened. Press your feet up to the ceiling, hands underneath your low back. Take a breath in. Lower down a third here. Leg lowers, just breathing. Yeah, but it lasted literally like, I'm, I would say 10 seconds. And I was like in a, in a moment of, of, you know, I don't think rage is the right word. Lower down another third. Irritation for sure. I'm the one that set that crate there like five minutes before it happened too, of course, right? So lower down another third. Just off the ground, look at your toes. Little bounce here. But you bring yourself back, right? You get present. Use your core. Use your body. Realize what's happening. Take a breath in and lift your feet up. Lower down another third. How you respond to situations, it changes when you do yoga. Down another third. Instead of reacting, old ways of being might show up, but how quickly you can bring yourself back to equanimity, to center. Lower down, just off the mat. Look at your toes. Point your toes and then flutter kick like you're swimming. Yeah, really like wake up the feet, actively point the toes, spread the toes. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hug your knees into your chest. You have options for a waterfall or a shoulder stand. Just getting the feet up. Hands, if you don't have a block, you can just take hands to either side of your tailbone as a prop here to keep your feet up in the air. Or the option there to grab a block and set it underneath your low back. Feet up. If you want to take shoulder stand here, Hands come to your low back, hips lift all the way up. Just breathing. Don't do what I just did. When you're in shoulder stand, you don't really want to turn your head to side to side. It's really not a great idea for the neck in some cases. Wherever you are, just take it on. Breathe here, winding down. Practice coming to an end like soon, but it's not over yet, right? These last couple poses, just as important to stay present. Present to rest, present to release, to ease, softening, Just registering the work you did, acknowledging yourself for the work you did. Like, did you act? Do you actually do that? Right? You set aside time for yoga. You show up. You work. You challenge yourself. You kind of just make it no big deal that you did that. Like, it's self care. It's like adding that you know physical activity to your day and when mindfulness to your day kind of a big deal as they say <laughs> don't glaze over it acknowledge yourself every time you join me for yoga every time you get to a studio well, and stay tuned to the channel too i've gotten the okay from all of my studio owner friends to film um classes in the studios you know and uh that i teach at so there will be some content coming that's not just from my as lovely as my living room is it's <laughs> keeping it interesting you can dangle your feet, bend your knees, or if you're in shoulder stand, you can take the plow and the deaf man's pose. Definitely don't turn your head from side to side in plow or deaf man's pose. Please keep your back of your skull pressing into the floor. And slowly make your way back down onto your mat. 
Left leg long, right knee into your chest. And then draw your knee across your body. Sounds like the dog is passed out. He must have exhausted himself, planning his trip in his head. <laughs> he thought he was going on. Keep drawing the knee across. Get that low back stretch, the side body stretch. Your right shoulder stays um, on the floor as best you can, okay? It doesn't matter how far this knee gets over. Just look for the stretch there. Breathe in. Twist a bit deeper. Come back through center. Get your hips at the center of your mat again. It probably shifted over to the right a little bit. Then draw the left knee in. Cross it over the body. A big side body stretch. Breathe in, twist it out, a couple more here. Inhale, and exhale. Big breath, deepen that twist, come back to center. Give yourself one final squeeze here, knees in, shoulders lift, forehead to your knees, hug in tight and release. Shavasana is the final pose. Close your eyes. Set your arms and legs. Fall open at ease. And take deep rest here in stillness. Yeah, so the last pose of this practice, it's really a pose where the work is mental. Find your mind maybe wandering to sounds around you, to things you have to do, and like be aware of it. You're not a bad yogi if your mind wanders. You're a human being, right? Your mind will wander. Regardless of where it wanders to, if it's good, if it's less than ideal, what your thoughts take you to, just like the work of coming back to just your body at ease. The points of contact with your mat, feel that. Every single breath, the possibility to come back, right? You might wander off, let yourself go down a path, you know, and you just come back when you catch it. Now is not the time to think about that thing. Now's the time to take rest and to be still. Take a big breath in. Open your mouth and let that out. And bring some movement back to your fingers and your toes. Reach your arms up over your head, stretch your body out. And roll to one side, fetal position. Knees into your chest, rest your head on your bicep. Just taking your time, slowly come up to a seated position, sitting up tall, hands at the center of your chest. Keep your eyes closed, yeah, for this last moment here. The sound of Om is the sound of creation, the hum of the earth. It's the sound of new beginnings. We start our practice to clear the space and we finish it just to bring new energy for the rest of the day. Let's take an OM together. Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe out. 
thumbs to the center of your forehead. Thank you for practicing with me. Together we bow, we say namaste. Thank you, yogis. Have an awesome rest of your day. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you enjoyed this. Um, share it with somebody that might want to do a flow. This is kind of a little bit more beginner maybe for Journey into Power. So if you do know somebody that wants to get into the practice um, and maybe some of my classes are a little bit too quick or um, not descriptive enough, this one's not for them. For you guys, yeah, share it. And more coming, I promise, yeah, because I'm, I'm going to film some classes in some of the studios and, you know, just to promote the studios that are we're back open um, for the time being in Toronto. Um, who knows what the future holds, right? That's where yoga helps. Go with the flow. Keep moving your body. Keep nourishing your body and stay connected to your yoga practice. And I'll see you again really soon. Mr. B, where'd you go? What happened? Passed out? Come here. Thank you for flowing with me, yogis. Veronica, Carrie, have an awesome rest of your day. Hello, yeah. Your fan club wants to say goodbye, I'm sure. You were just so cute and crazy this morning. Yeah? Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Mr. B is always entertaining, if nothing else. I can definitely guarantee he will entertain you <laughs> to no end. <laughs> Have an awesome day.